You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. For many people, investing in real estate is a means to an end, and that end is usually financial freedom, which we call real wealth, having both the time and the money to live life the way you want to. Well, our guest today is a great example of living real wealth. I'm Kathy Fedke, and welcome to The Real Wealth Show. Eric Upchurch is an Army Special Operations veteran who has a passion for educating the military community on how to create long-term wealth through real estate. While serving our nation, Eric completed five combat deployments and earned a master's degree in aeronautical science, all while managing a 27-man squad. And today, Eric has combined his passion for the military and veterans with real estate. Eric, welcome to The Real Well Show. Thanks for having me on. Glad to be here. You know, I'm writing this section on purpose and mission in our new book that Rich and I are writing. And I wanted to interview you for that. And I thought, well, let's just do, let's just do it both at once. We'll do a Real Well Show interview and also an interview for the book. So a lot of people today have this impression that real estate investors are just greedy and only in it for themselves, but you're really showing that that is not always true. So let's talk about what your current passion is and how it relates to real estate. Yeah. So I'll start off by saying that the beginning answer that I I help people get informed about when, when that comes out, because we have a large, a large community of uh, military real estate investors and, you know, we still get that. Of, oh, that sounds greedy. But look, we're we're in, we're incentivized by the government. Number one, to do these things. And if if real estate investors weren't doing these things, the standard of living for average Americans who can't afford to buy a house in the U.S. it would be terrible. And so I start by saying that first off, like we're renovating units, we're keeping infrastructure in place, we're doing the things that we're, that investors are incentivized to do. So there's there's that. Yeah, such Second, such a great important point is yeah. that you know not everybody is in a position to own their home. Certainly, when you're young, um, sometimes people just don't want to. Historically, home ownership has been uh, between you know around sixty five percent. So there's always this thirty ish percent of people who are just either don't want to own a home or are not in a position to. So where are they going to live? And of course, that's going to be a rental, and you can have it be a government rental or. An investor owns it. And you're right. Uh, Certainly the government incentivizes investors to provide housing. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, um, we end up helping a lot of veterans um, even with uh, HUD housing and and each community has their own version of it, but the HUD, HUD VASH program, you know, vouchers from the government for veterans, whether they're just disabled or they are out of work or whatever to get veterans in housing, um, and so there's a lot of things out there that, that you can do, not just flipping or whatever, the kind of the kind of stigma that people put on the money grab part of real estate investing. You know, we buy long term buy and hold apartment complexes and operate them for years and years and years. So these aren't quick term flips. They're let's st- stabilize them and put parks in them for kids to be able to enjoy them and, you know, really help build the community. I go out and meet with the, the mayor and the economic developer of the towns to see what we can do for them. What, listen to them. What do they want in their community that we're coming in to invest our time, treasure and talent into and when you do that, some great things can come out of it and both sides win and the tenants win in a big way. I love that. Okay. So you are, uh, you're an army special operations veteran yes, and you have a special place in your heart for other veterans. So uh, what are you doing? Oh boy. So first and foremost on the business side, we have the largest military real estate investing uh, education community in, in the U S if not the world, we have 80,000 members um, deployed overseas all over the place and 40 meetups in all kinds of countries and things like that to really connect the military real estate investing community. And um, aside from that, so that's active duty, passive income. um, But then aside from that, it's to me, I've had so many moments down in your neck of the woods, down in LA sitting on the 405, you know, especially in my younger years, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, as I'm trying to figure out after my time in service, what is the meaning of life? I mean, that's a big one, right? <laughs> what, but what, that's a, that's great a big time. one. Yes. <laughs> but that's a great time to think about it when you're sitting there in bumper to bumper traffic on the 405 you yeah. know? and you're going like, I was looking, I remember looking around very distinctly um, 
I'm wearing like a polo shirt for the job I was working at and I'm driving the, the manager's special that I got from Hertz that day at John Wayne airport, you know, and it's like a Dodge mar- maroon Dodge minivan and I'm bumper to bumper going, I, I don't matter right now. Like, and I don't mean that in a, like some dark way. I just mean like I'm, I'm here for a hundred years and what I go, maybe if I'm lucky when what I, this business meeting that I'm going to right now, it doesn't even matter. Like no one's going to remember that I had this one conversation and I'm sitting here spending or wasting my time in bumper to bumper traffic. What am I doing? So kind of to cut the story story, it's like, what am I doing? The person next to me thinks they're just as valuable as I, and they are they're just as important as I am. They, but they have a purpose. They're going to a meeting or they're going to meet a loved one or they're going to the grocery store or whatever their day is. And there's thousands and tens of thousands of people with me on this one freeway. And so I, I get in my head, I'm like, there's gotta be something else. Like there's gotta be like, like why, when I die, what am I going to be holding on to? You can't No, you never saw a U-Haul behind a hearse. Right. So what am I here for? <laughs> uh, and so then I was like, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm passionate about education and, and just really helping people. And as a staff sergeant in special operations, I had 27 soldiers um, that, that I deployed in seven different theaters of operation around the globe. And we were constantly on the move for 20 years our, our unit was deployed and we'd constantly rotate in and out of combat and training. And the one thing that I really got out of that was I was a leader. Um, and I'll get some context in a second on this, but I was a leader that forced my soldiers to go to college. I, for, so I, so I graduated from UC Santa Barbara. Here's the context part. I graduated from UC Santa Barbara. Most people would be an enlisted, I mean, a, a commissioned officer with a college degree. I chose to be enlisted. And what that did for me was I was 24 years old instead of, you know, 18 coming up as a private. I was 24 years old and skipped all the private ranks. I was a specialist at E4 in the army, but kind of more important than that, I had been through college. I went to a major university and had that experience and realized that it's just 13th grade. It's just 14th grade. It's just the next thing. So as humans, we're built for growth. We're built for the next step. And we're attuned to that over the first 18 years of our life. Okay, well, what's the next thing? But a lot of times, military members will just stop. When, it, when they're 18, they're like, now what? Now I'm an adult. Now what? And maybe they don't have a, a community around them pushing them to do something great next. And so I felt it uh, to be my duty to say, hey, part of being part of my squad is coming up with a college curriculum so that you have the opportunity. I'll help you with the application process. I'll help you with time if you need to go to a class on post or whatever it may be. But every one of you is going to to uh, at least enroll and, and give it a shot, give college a shot because it's not that scary. So education is one thing that I do. Um, and I've always been kind of drawn to it. Additionally, um, and I didn't realize this until I was in my 30s, influencing people. And I don't mean as an influencer as we know it now, but... <laughs> I was a, I was working in the cornfields in Iowa when I was 12 years old and I ended up being a team leader. Somebody said, they were like, Hey, you'd be a great team leader. You check all the rows. You're making sure that people are not missing any tassels in the cornfield. And so I was a team leader. And then in the retail stores, I was a retail you know manager of people. And um, so every job I had had, even up to the military, it always ended up being a manager or influencer leader of, of some sort. And I didn't choose that. Um, we all have these kind of tendencies, I think, that we're drawn to based on our personality types. Um, and that was just, that's something I've always been drawn to is like, who can I grab and like, just take some information that I know and and give it to them the short way. Like, hey, here's, hey, here's the best way to do this thing. And let's make sure we do it the right way together. So education, influence, and then I found my niche. That's the other part of this. So I found my niche in real estate investing Um, and now it's like putting all of that stuff together. It's, it's kind of full circle of like, how do I give back? How do I, how do I make sure that, um, my life isn't just a money grab? Like we started the show with, like, I don't want it to be that. I want it to be, um, actually I was just interviewed, um, uh, we have a mutual friend and, uh, Brandon Turner. And one of the questions he asked me was, what do you want your kids to say about you at your eulogy? Oh Mm -hmm. man. That's, that's like a real, like I got choked up. I, I hope they edit that part out of the show because <laughs> um, it it's really, that's one of those things where you, you put yourself in that position. And all I could think was like, I want them to know that I, 
I did something great for other people. And it's, it's actually not that hard. You don't have to think about changing the world. Start by changing your neighbor, changing, you know, like helping somebody fix your tire on the side of the highway, you know, find some one little thing you can do today and then make the same decision tomorrow. And when you do those little things, they become big things because you find a niche that you enjoy. And maybe it is, I will stop at every single broken down car for the rest of my life. And I will help the person on the side of the road, no matter where I go. That, that's a niche. I mean, that's a cool thing to do. And you said you could cause a crazy ripple effect. So I've fallen into um, this kind of building homes for homeless veterans. And I was, I was speaking at an event in Kansas city in 2019 and I said on stage, because you know, when you say something out loud in front of people, you're committed, right? Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to donate a house to homeless veteran in 2020. I didn't wow. know how I had no connections in the space. I didn't know other than just the military space in general, I'm going to figure it out. And my buddy, Nathan Brooks goes, do you know that here in Kansas city, there's veterans community project, right? Literally right down the road. And I was like, well, I had no idea. He goes, you got to go connect. So I connected and here we are now, you know, five years later, um, I sit on on the chair of the uh, as the chair of the um, national fundraising for uh, Veterans Community Project, and we built 64 homes for homeless veterans last year. I've raised over uh, over half a million dollars um, for the cause, which has helped thousands of veterans. And um, and I'm just passionate about it. I do these crazy hikes every year now to raise tons of money. And like my so my mind is like, yeah, you can buy real estate part time. You can do real estate on the side. And I can spend so much more time and energy also on helping other people achieve their dreams, but also helping get my comrades off the streets. They don't deserve to be um, under an overpass. Um, and, and it's there's 32,000 homeless veterans. And Wow, 32,000. But Kathy, the cool part is that's a solvable problem. That's a mm. number that is not scary. It is uh, four years ago, there was 36 or 38,000 homeless veterans. We're making a dent. We're making progress with private funds. And Amazing. I know now that when I and we collectively raise $250 million, uh, the problem is gone forever. There's a plan, a solution in place that works. Already, We're already built out in six communities and we have 3,000 communities on the wait list. It's just a money problem. And time. You have to educate the communities on how beautiful these homes are and how they actually bring up the community and things like that. So there's a little bit of education, but I also love education. So I feel like I'm the right guy to help end veteran homelessness and put that on my tombstone and my life is worth living. I love everything you're saying is it fits so well into the chapter that we're writing, which is like how you find that purpose. And, and it really comes down to taking um taking note of what matters to you just taking the time to say what what lights me up you know what if i could only do five things or one thing or whatever what would it be and um you know you you found it it's education and caring for your comrades as you said and also having a vehicle for that that if you invest in real estate personally that frees up your time to spend it more meaningfully that's real wealth. That's what it comes down to, to be able to free up your time because your time is really the most important thing, right? That's limited. Money isn't as limited. Uh, so I love it. I love it. You're fitting right into the book. So you found your purpose. And what would you say, uh, like if you were to sum, up, sum it up into one line, what, what is that purpose? Well, my purpose is to educate, empower, and to help people grow. And it wasn't something that I knew right off the bat. Um, I just want to encourage people to try small things that make big impacts on how they feel because, and it's hard to think about that unless someone, unless you have this light bulb moment of like, pay attention to your feelings. When you, when you get choked up, your bot, your body, your soul likes that thing, like whatever that is, that, that's passion. Mm -hmm. Listen, you gotta, you gotta find that. And so try a bunch of little things until they become big things in your life and in your heart, because you know, as well as I do, when you, when someone tries to force you to do something that you don't like, like for me, it's underwriting multifamily. Ugh, you can't pay me to be behind an Excel spreadsheet. And I had, I wrestled with that for years. You know, I, I just don't, I don't enjoy it. So yeah. there are people who do, 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so I will partner with those people who fill the gaps and I will fill their gaps, you know, and, and that's how you should think about finding your passion and purpose. Really seek out things that you think you might enjoy. If you enjoy them, duplicate that experience and then amplify it and talk to people and tell everyone around you that it made you feel good and you want to do more of it. And you'll be amazed at, at what joy you can find and what impact you can make. Yeah, I love it. So in the book where we talk about you know, having that, that overreaching purpose that, you know, you, you may not ever achieve. It might be like, I will solve veteran homelessness. Yeah. And I know I've heard you say that on stage, like yeah. I will solve it. And that's a big mission. That's a big yeah. purpose, right? And may or may not happen. But then to get there, you've got missions, right? You've got different yeah. missions. Just, I mean, you would know it better than anybody. Yeah. So what has been your current mission up towards this purpose? Oh man. I, so in 2022, we did a 170 mile hike around Lake Tahoe. Uh, we completed it in nine days, uh, about 20 miles a day. Um, a lot of elevation gain. Uh, we raised tons of money, almost a couple, uh, almost 200,000. We raised 190 something thousand dollars. Um, and then last year we did rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon, as well as, which is uh, th almost 40 miles in one day, uh, like 36 miles, part of the trail was cut off, uh, raised some money for that. And that's a crazy one. You go from the South Rim to the North Rim and then back and down to the bottom, up to the North Rim, down to the bottom and back out in the same day. And then we did Mount Hood, circumnavigated Mount Hood, which was 42 miles in 24 hours. That was tough. And getting to a point here this year, uh, this fall, if anybody is interested, we are putting, I got nine permits for the coveted John Muir Trail, which is 211 miles ending at the highest point in the lower 48, which is Mount Whitney. It's 14,505 feet. It will take us over probably about 14 days to accomplish. But here's the point. I'm doing hard things that most people won't try, including just getting a permit to do that. Most people will just be like, ah, I can't get a permit. I'm not going to try. But to do these hard things and raise tons of money for a, a passion or a purpose of yours, the only reward is another mission no one else will try. And when you, when you challenge your body, your mind, your soul, your comrades, your, your entrepreneur friends, amazing things can happen. And then you go on to it and again and again. And when, and when that is done and we will end veteran homelessness this decade, not just in my lifetime, we'll do it this decade. When that's done, veteran suicide will also be the next thing. There'll always be another summit. There has to be, there must be another summit behind um, impossible things that you're trying to accomplish. Hmm. You know, it's, it's so easy to just give up and say, you know, what can I do? You know, what can I do about this? And I even take my own sister who has been battling cancer for, mm -hmm. since she was 20, you know, so 40 years and, <clears throat> you know, you just gave me ideas. Like, how can I help her raise more money? Because now her husband can't work anymore. He's got his own health issues. And um, it's like, oh my gosh, wait, this, it doesn't, raising money could be fun. You don't have to just do a GoFundMe. You know, yeah. I could, I could put on an event. I could yeah. do offer coaching uh, to, to just support them. So thank you. Thank you. There yeah. is always a way. Yeah, it I'm has to start with the passion. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely uh, of the mindset and, and one of my, the, the motto for my special operations unit is night soccer's don't quit. And when you, when you don't quit, you cannot fail. And you hear that kind of anecdotally, you hear that it's like one of those cliche things that a lot of people say, especially in business, but I've lived it. And there's nothing, there's nothing hard about buying real estate or helping a friend. What's hard is making it out of combat alive. What's hard is when you're being chased down a mountain. This is not thankfully my experience on this part, but being chased down the mountain by the Taliban and watching your friends die along the way. That's and, and, and knowing that if you stop your next, that's hard. And so perspective matters too. I mean, we all live in our own realities, which is, is valid. Um, and, and something I've had to work through for sure also is understanding that not everyone has my perspective on this, but 
there's nothing hard about making phone calls and sending emails to buy their next real estate deal or wiring money. <laughs> um, what's hard, harder than my hike to Mount Whitney, harder than hiking 211 miles is, or harder, harder than raising money for charity is living, is serving your country and living under a bridge in the cold. That's hard. Mm. God, you're making me get going to cry. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, that's powerful. Can't, can't imagine. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you some real estate questions, but I just can't segue there right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a hard cut in the, <laughs> in the interview and start over. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we're at our 20 minutes. Look at me. I am tearing up. Uh, Eric, I knew there was going to be a reason to have you on and I should have had you on sooner. So uh, how can people find out more about uh, these fundraisers? Yeah. Uh, so you can go to ericupchurch.com slash giving. Um, the campaign that I put together goes, every penny goes directly to the platinum rated nonprofit that I support, uh, which is Veterans Community Project. Please go check them out. And, and if you're an entrepreneur who has time, freedom, real wealth, please connect with me. And I'd love to invite you on our hike that will be undoubtedly one of the most epic, beautiful, impactful hikes uh, through the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, this fall. So please connect with me. Awesome. Well, thank you. We'll have you, we'll have you come back and we'll talk about uh, syndicating and multifamily and all the things you're doing. All right, Eric, thank you so much for joining me here on the real well show. You're truly living it. Thanks Kathy. And thank you for joining me here on the real well show. My passion, as you may know by now, is to enlighten you on how you can create more real wealth in your life. If you want to find out how real estate can be the vehicle to help you do that, just go to realwealthshow.com. We have over 500 free webinars to help you on your journey, plus referrals to teams around the country who can help you find the inventory that both cash flows and is in growth markets. I'm Kathy Fedke. Thanks for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. We'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.